I lead the sprint group, which is security and privacy engineering. And what we try to do is to find the foundations to uh, not only define privacy and make research about privacy, but about how to build and engineer and privacy preserving systems. This is Carmina Troncoso, professor of the IC school at EPFL. Well, it's a very interesting topic to me because it's something I care about. And why do we care about privacy? A lot of people always are in this discussion of I don't have anything to hide or I don't have any secret or I don't care of other people knowing. Well, first of all, this is uh, many times a misconception. Everybody does care a lot about what they're doing and who they tell it, like you have a very different persona when you are at home with your parents, when you are with your girlfriend or boyfriend, or when you are with your friends. We have different projections, we are at work, um, and we have mechanisms to actually protect the size of life in the offline world. But this is arguably still a very narrow judgment of the critical role of privacy in the modern world. Privacy is not only about that. The fact that um, we have private information allows us to create our own world, our own perception, and define ourselves and have freedom. And what I mean with this is that actually allowing people to know a lot about us creates an imbalance of power in which these people can use this data to uh, influence our lives and our decisions. The examples of this imbalance of power on the internet are numerous. Two examples that we live nowadays are on the one hand the advertising industry that gathers all of these data, millions and millions and millions are going on the internet on just gathering data about users to use this data to sell products better to us. And that is one that you may, again, or may not care. Some people say, I actually like that Amazon offers to me the best movie that the next I have to see, or this uh, very nice photo camera that I actually wanted to buy, and they just show it to me. But there is a more problematic one uh, that now we have uh, just witnessed with the Cambridge Analytica scandal. What Cambridge Analytica was about is a, a small company making a small application that just with 100k users, got data from 80 million Americans. And this data was very naive uh, on appearance, such as um, just their public friends, uh, the post that they like, so something that they considered that is okay for other people to know, and where they were living. And with these very little pieces of information, they were able to construct psychological profiles to identify which of these people could maybe swing their vote to some other candidate and which exact advertising or which exact information did they need to be given in order to change this vote and we all know what happened there. Privacy thus has a global impact. So the question of privacy is not only all oh, my individualness or my persona, it's also that democracy and the society in which all we want to live is actually dependent on us having this bubble where we can keep our beliefs and our uh, preferences under control. And giving this information to somebody with power enough may actually just change the world in where we live. To quote Edward Snowden, arguing that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying that you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. So what can be done about privacy? Well, Professor Troncoso is working on technological solutions. So what privacy technologies are all about is about trying to give mechanisms to people, to users, to maintain this bubble in an online uh, data world. So more and more we use uh, electronics and electronic communications to interact with each other, to interact with institutions, like many uh, interactions that you now have with EPFL are uh, mediated by a computer, interact with institutions such as the government, interact with the hospital, more and more data is around. Privacy technologies try to give mechanisms to control what information goes where and try to limit the amount of information that is around. And not only that, but also try to minimize the amount of entities uh, in this ecosystem that have access on this data and that we need to trust in order to treat this precious data in a nice way. We live in a connected world and we like to be connected. We like to be connected with other people. Doesn't, we don't necessarily like to be connected with tracking technologies. What 
GDPR is doing is putting a lot of burden on people that have the data, which actually uh, also makes people rethink the fact that they maybe not want the data 